Hey guys, in today's video, I'll be sharing my process on how I created this little OOTD self-insert drawing of yours truly. I was inspired to draw this stylized self-portrait since I felt like a little baddie. And I've been trying to channel a bit of that hot girl summer energy, if you will. And I thought it'd be really fun to start out the video with a bit of a vlog. If you're new here, my name is Chris Hong and I'm an independent artist based in Toronto, Canada. And when I'm not sitting at my desk creating, I love going on what I like to call my little adventures. This is an area I hang out and pass by quite often. There's the Art Gallery of Ontario, there's Chinatown nearby, and a really great art supply store called Above Ground. I wanted to stop by the art store to pick up a few things, but first, I stopped by this park nearby to film some content because a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. Since it had a really nice view of the CN Tower and it was relatively secluded so I didn't feel as self-conscious. And just a few steps away from the park is the above ground art store. I just wanted to quickly pop in and grab some high flow acrylics by Golden which I may or may not be using in my next illustration. So stay tuned for a future video on that. After that, I headed over to Kensington Market. I couldn't help but hit up this one thrift store on the way. And as I was filming this shot, I had a CBC reporter approach me and ask if I wanted to talk to him about aliens. I was like, no, and I ran away into the store. So I've shared this I guess news or announcement over on my Instagram, but it's my first time officially sharing it to you guys here on YouTube. I am planning a group trip with Trova Trip, and I'm hoping that a number of you lovely members of my community and I can go on a trip somewhere really exciting in the spring of next year. I'm tentatively thinking maybe Italy or even Japan or South Korea. So if you'd be interested in something like that, let me know where and when you'd want to go by filling out this short survey in the description box. So after bumming around a bit in Kensington Market, just feeling myself, feeling a little bit awkward, but you know, trying my best, um, I hit up this cafe nearby that I've been meaning to check out for a while called Ten Dean. It kind of seemed like a lobby of a condo that operates as a cafe. Um, it was actually a pretty cool space with really tall vaulted ceilings and exposed pipes and it had a really chill kind of loungy feel. Most people there seem to be working on their laptops so I think I'd feel pretty comfortable filming a future cafe diary here. Though I will say that the drink seemed pretty pricey at $7 plus tax and tip for my iced hibiscus lemonade. On my way home, I stopped by Queen's Park to do a little Sunny Angel unboxing in the wild. And fun fact, I've been collecting Sunny Angels for many years, so it's been really fun and amusing for me to see how it's suddenly gotten so popular recently, and I'm personally loving every minute of it, and I've really been enjoying seeing other people do Sunny Angel unboxings as well. As you can see by my excitement, I got one of the babies I really wanted with the flower on the side. And that pretty much concludes my little day out and about in downtown Toronto. Again, if you're interested in going on a trip with me and doing basically what I did in this video, then please go fill out that survey so I can plan the best trip for us. And now we finally arrived at the art portion of this video. I've drawn myself a couple of times before, but this time I really wanted to focus on the fashion and I wanted to draw it in a pretty specific way, um, in a very stylized way where the proportions are very exaggerated. I wanted the head to be big, but now looking back, I think maybe the head is a little bit too big. Um, I'm still playing around with the proportions um, for 
drawing myself in this kind of style. Going into this kind of assignment, I really wanted to draw it in a kind of a chibi style where the proportions are very exaggerated and kind of childlike, where the head is really big and the body is really small. I don't know why, I just didn't want to draw myself in realistic proportions. I just, I wanted that very exaggerated, I guess somewhat reminiscent of like a brat stall kind of a look. I used to draw myself all the time back in the day, but I kind of fell off of doing that. But um, there's something very empowering about uh, drawing yourself and I do kind of see it as an act of self-love in a way. Um, so I want to get back into doing them more. So the first thing I did once I had the drawing transferred onto the watercolor paper is lay down the base colors in watercolors. My intention for this piece was to uh, use mostly watercolors and bring in a little bit of markers and a little bit of color pencils, which seems to be kind of the process lately that I'm using to create my illustrations. I knew going in that this wasn't like a typical illustration where I have a full-fledged background. I really wanted to keep this as simple as possible. Because for me to want to draw more kind of fit pics like this, I think I need to find a process that I can kind of pump out very quickly. Otherwise, I'm probably not going to prioritize doing these kinds of drawings over my just like regular full illustrations. So that was kind of the objective for this piece, uh, which is to find the appropriate kind of drawing style that I wanted to do it in, um, in terms of the proportions and the um, painting style uh, that was appealing enough, but not taking me days and days to finish. Because I want to keep it as low stakes and low stress as possible. I'll talk a little bit more about the outfit. I admit that I actually drew this months ago when I picked up a new pair of running shoes, my uh, Solomons, um, and I really like them. And I don't know, I've just been kind of feeling my outfits a bit more um, wearing them. And then I picked up this green tank top with these like long kind of tassel -y details at the front and the back. And I just like love how I feel in them. They make me feel like a little baddie. So uh, that was really the inspiration behind my desire to draw this uh, picture. And so you're probably wondering where is this bag from? It's not the bag that you were wearing in uh, your vlog footage. Um, so this bag is uh, actually a bag from a brand called Misbehave. And I did uh, purchase this bag, but I ended up returning it because to be honest with you, I didn't like it enough to want to keep it. Um, but I really still like it in theory and that's why I incorporated it into the drawing regardless, even though I didn't end up keeping it. Um, and yeah, uh, the character is definitely, uh, I don't know if she like looks 100% like me. I mean, she is very exaggerated, very stylized. Um, but I try to give her certain traits that remind me of me, um, like her very pointy head and the uh, like blonde highlights uh, with the black hair. And after the first uh, pass of watercolors laying down the base colors, uh, I go in with another layer of watercolors for the shading. There's a very funny and wholesome story about these jeans. I was thrifting at Value Village one day uh, many months ago and um, this older lady uh, came to me with a pair of jeans and she was like, hey, do you want these? I have like 70 pairs of jeans and I don't need them. And lo and behold, I tried them on and they looked fire. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Uh, for finding them for me um, and I thought she was the coolest lady because she must have been somewhere in her 60s but she had the coolest sense of style and for her to hand me these pair of 
jeans that like I love and that somehow fit me perfectly. <laughs> wow, she really has a very like tuned eye for fashion. And um, I was just very grateful to have been at Valley Village at the same time as her um, when she was looking to hand these pair of jeans off to somebody. For me, this piece was pretty indulgent in terms of the rendering. I I really just had fun with the rendering. Uh, because it doesn't have a background, I really just wanted to have fun with the rendering and not worry about if the lighting is coming off correctly. Um, it was really just about making the forms feel as 3D as possible. And I love that kind of rendering. That's like kind of my comfort zone type of rendering. And going into this illustration, uh, like one of the thoughts that I had in my mind was to make the character's head look just so um, like around, like, you know, like a doll's head, you know, I wanted the head to feel like very solid on top of the little body underneath. So yeah, for the most part, while using watercolors, I was just in the zone, rendering away to my little heart's content. I had a lot of fun rendering the jeans and specifically the distressed um, like cutouts in the knees because uh, it was really fun to add shadow to the knees to create that kind of separation from the jean with the knees. Just adding a little bit of dark value um, where the knees are peeking out, it really it really sells the jeans for me and the look of those like distressed uh, holes and how the skin is just kind of peeking through. Moments like these make me so happy when creating an illustration. It truly feels like magic to me to make something feel real, not necessarily like hyper realistic, but real enough and believable enough that it feels tangible, you know? So this is how this piece looked with just the watercolors alone. And I did try to go as far as I could with the watercolors. And honestly, looking back on the footage, I really should have kind of taken a step back and realized that this piece doesn't look that bad or like doesn't look that far off from finish. But at the time, I convinced myself that it needed a lot more work. And so a lot more work ensued thereafter. But I think I really could have saved myself a number of hours if I had just taken a step back and looked at this piece like on another day with fresh eyes because I actually really like how it looks like right now um, with just watercolors alone. It actually looks kind of fresher than I think what I ended up with. That's kind of the biggest lesson that I'm taking away from uh, this process, uh, which is that I need to um, kind of hold myself back from the compulsion to kind of smooth everything out. Um, but yeah, uh, I felt I needed to punch up the colors a little bit. And so I go in with markers now and um, basically I kind of use markers as a way to glaze on more colors and shift colors um, one direction or another as opposed to like rendering with the markers because I had already done the rendering in the watercolor stage. Using markers over watercolors is uh, perhaps not like the most archival and like proper way, but I've been enjoying doing it as an easy way to uh, adjust colors and like pump up the saturation without affecting too much of the values or rendering. It's an easy way to tint the colors. And it's also an easy way to add like a really subtle shift of um, values with like a neutral gray marker. Um, as opposed to just adding more watercolor on top and like messing up the rendering. So I've really embraced incorporating markers in this way in my process. Now I'm going in with color pencils to smooth out any patchy areas of the rendering. Again, I kind of wish that I had not felt the need to do that. For example, I left this kind of like patchy area on the forehead 
Uh, I left that in because I really liked how that looked and I didn't want to mess with it. I really like seeing those like edges of the watercolor against smoother areas of the uh, piece. I really like that um, contrast in um, level of detail. But I like using colored pencils because it does help me render areas that are a bit more tricky, like um, the hand holding the phone, like couldn't really uh, render that properly um, with the watercolor because it, it was such a small area. So I really um, kind of needed that precision that I have with uh, the color pencils because it simulates um, drawing and color pencils are really helpful in lightening up any areas that might have gotten too dark as opposed to markers because markers add value you can't lighten an area with markers so yeah and that's why i bring in the color pencils at the end of the process so i'm actually pretty self-conscious about highlighting fashion in my artwork um fashion has actually never really been the focus of my artwork ever um when i draw clothes on my characters i'm kind of thinking more in terms of shapes and silhouette as opposed to details i'm actually very bad at um figuring out details in clothing like very bad you'll probably have noticed you probably have thought these thoughts to yourself like oh she does not know how to draw anything <laughs> she draws the same clothes over and over again and it is true because uh i don't know why i have a hard time figuring out clothing design because it's just mm, hasn't been my strong suit it's not something that i really focus on but i think i might be just making excuses there so i have been trying to focus a little bit more on adding touches to the clothing that uh, give a bit more insight into the character and tell the story of the character a little bit more. Um, so because this drawing is technically like a self-portrait, um, I wanted to add a bit of like a quirky and kind of kitschy element to the like accessories because that is something that I am personally really into. I I love kitschy retro toys and figurines. And yeah, so that's where the Teletubby pop socket comes in. Uh, I really want one for myself, but I looked it up and such a thing does not exist and that is a great shame so i think someone needs to get on top of that and make some because i would love to have a little dipsy pop socket that does not look terrible <laughs> you know which teletubbies already is a little creepy but like bootleg teletubby like bad bootleg teletubby is you know what's the word cursed is is cursed i appreciate a certain level of cursed but someone needs to do it maybe that'll be me who knows i actually have been toying with the idea of making teletubby inspired stickers but we'll see about that so again i feel like i probably didn't need to go in uh, so much with the color pencils but the color pencils did help me um, with the bag specifically in bringing out the monogram detail um, in the pattern of the bag i guess i could have done it in watercolor but in my mind it was just way easier to do in color pencils so i left it to the end to do that so at this point i was pretty much done everything uh looked to be rendered as much as they could be rendered pretty much um and that's kind of when i'm like okay i should think of finishing this piece and for me it didn't feel finished until i did something to tie the phone with the character and i wasn't really sure what to do i thought of a bunch of different ideas like maybe some um, text bubbles coming off the phone and having it say something funny and having her say something like "ugh," I don't know something like that but I, I really just couldn't decide and I didn't want to get ahead of myself and like overcomplicate this more than it needed to be so I settled on doing just like a couple of emojis so I did like the heart emoji with the sparklies and the fire emoji so my thought behind the decision was that 
um, her phone is just blowing up with like all this adoration and she's just like unbothered by it you know she's like meh this is just another day in the life of Chris Hong <laughs> I wish. I am definitely not the unbothered queen that I, I portrayed myself to be here, but I would like to be her one day. When I grow up, I, I would like to be her. Now I'm remembering, I think a part of what inspired me to draw this was uh, I've been listening to a lot of K-pop lately, uh, specifically girl groups and more specifically um, Le Seraphim's songs have that kind of baddie like unbothered energy about it that i've been really digging uh and trying to channel <laughs> that one <laughs> you know some artists are inspired by life uh just like beautiful things around them and some artists are inspired by k-pop so yeah, I think that's all that I wanted to touch on regarding the process. I really like how it turned out, um, even though I do wish that I had kind of stopped at an earlier point and not make it so polished in the end. I think I did end up making it a little bit too polished that it feels a little less fresh. Um, so that's something that I'm going to be mindful of in uh, the next kind of fit pick if you would like to see more of these definitely let me know so that is it for today's video let me know what you thought of the vlog portion uh, it was definitely out of my comfort zone um, filming that but at the same time I kind of had a lot of fun doing it and and for me it's actually the kind of content that I like consuming myself on YouTube so I'm kind of curious to dabble in it uh, so let me know what you thought of that and yeah, let me know what you thought of the uh, video in general and again as a reminder if you're interested in going on a trip with me to Europe or Asia or wherever sometime in the spring of next year don't forget to fill out the survey in the description box it will help me out so much so with all that thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video bye